if you're doing a podcast or presenting uh, your business or your cause or you're a journalist, whatever, if you just look that little bit more professional than everybody else, you get noticed. So let's now move to um, the next chapter, which is about uh, video quality, image quality. So you are, you are a man of many talents. Not only do you master audio quality, but you're also very good at, at video quality. So what does it take to actually uh, record a video podcast or video cast that are of superior quality? Do I have to spend 20 grains on the material or are there any tricks that you can give us? No, at least 30 grand. I'm joking, I'm joking, don't switch off. Um, so um, the one first thing I would say, by the way, is that everybody always asks about the camera. I think the lighting is the most important thing because any camera relies on light. So if you just get even a little ring light, you know, all the kind of influencers, you know, when they're doing their stuff yeah. on TikTok. I'm using one, so I'm an ring. influencer. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Well, I'm using one right now, too. Um, and it, funny enough, I notice wherever people go to get their hair cut nowadays, they always have ring lights because people want to have their photograph taken. So a ring light is a very flattering light. And you're supposed to put your camera or webcam right in the middle of it, if you can. Um, and what that does is gives you a nice soft light. So if you have multiple lights, you have to position them correctly to get the look right. Whereas with a ring light, you don't have to be a lighting expert. You just stick it right in front of you and it will give you a, a nice flattering kind of light. So the first thing I would say is sort out a light before you worry about anything else. Because even with a terrible webcam, if you give it good light, it won't look too bad because they've got little small sensors on them. So that's why they struggle. Um, obviously, make sure that it's up to eye level. So this is why and I mean, one of the things I've been doing recently is giving lots of training to spokespeople, salespeople, even politicians uh, with regards to coming across on camera for on Zoom, on interviews for TV stations. Um, and so many people are still doing uh, videos where the laptop is on the table in front of them looking up. And of course, that's not flattering, uh, you know, especially, you know, if um, you've been eating a little bit too much um, recently, like I have. But for anybody, you want to get the camera up to eye level, maybe even slightly above eye level if you want to be really flattering. Um, so sort out your lighting, sort out your eye line. And then when it comes to the webcam, you get stuff like the Logitech Brio, which is a very high quality uh, webcam. Um, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about whether it's HD or 4K at this stage. HD is good enough for most things. Um, but what I do is I actually run a mirrorless camera um, into my computer and I use that as my webcam. Now, why do I do that? Well, firstly, I like that look of the kind of blurry background. And um, so for this setup that I've got now, I'm actually in a really, really small room. I'm in a home office. It's absolutely tiny. Um, so if you have the right lens, it means in a very compact space, you can create quite a nice look. So the camera I'm shooting right now on is a Sony A5100. And I got it for about 200 euros on eBay. And the reason it's a very good camera, the reason it's quite cheap is it actually is pretty useless as a vlogging camera, which is what it was designed for. And the reason it's useless is there's nowhere to plug in a microphone. And the um, it, if you film on it, it starts overheating after about half an hour. But as a streaming camera um, for a home studio, it's great because you put a dummy battery in. And what a dummy battery is, is on one end, it's like the battery and the other end is a plug. So you plug it into where you plug your battery and then you can go for hours and hours and hours, not worry about battery. And then because I'm not recording video on it, um, you know, if I record, I record it on my computer or something, um, then it doesn't overheat. Um, and the lens I've got is about, 65 euros and it's called a seven artisans 25 millimeter 1.8 um so very very cheap lens but when people see this look so i mean you're talking 270 euros roughly for this camera setup um now you don't need to spend that much you could just use a webcam but people think i've got very very you know expensive camera um and I don't, it's just an old camera. And then what I do is I take my microphone in separately into my computer. So I use my camera as a webcam and then the microphone separately. If you wanted a mirrorless camera that uh, has a microphone plugged in so that you're, you maybe have a time mic, like a clip on mic, and that goes into the same camera and you have the video and the audio together, then I recommend something like a Sony a6400, um, which 
few hundred uh, euros more. But again, it depends what your budget is and what you're trying to do. But if you've got the lighting right and you've got that right. Now, the when you're using things like DSLRs and mirrorless, you need to get it into your computer. And the simplest way to do that is to fool your computer into thinking that it's a webcam. And the way you do that is you either get these little adapters, like there's one called the L Elgato, um, I think I might actually have one with me here actually, uh, Elgato Camlink. And the other one is to get a little vision mixer, like there's one called the ATEM Mini, which is about 200 or so euros. Um, and any of those devices will take an HDMI from a camera, plug it into your computer, and it sees it as a webcam. So again, it depends what level you want to get up to. Normal webcam, or you may already own a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. If it can do what's called clean HDMI out, which means it doesn't leave all the icons on the screen, then you can use that as a webcam. So very interesting is, um, so we don't necessarily need to buy a uh, webcam like the Logitech Brio, which is also around 240 uh, euros or something. So for the same amount, we can get a mirrorless camera, a very nice lens that gives a blurry background like you have uh, today for those watching us on, uh, on YouTube. And that's all. So basically, what do I need? I need um, 200, to spend 250 bucks on, on the camera and the lens. Um, if I'm a little bit more into technique, uh, I can buy an ATEM uh, Mini, uh, but it won't be more than 1,000 bucks, right? Well, yeah, I mean, the ATEM Mini is overkill for most people, because well, what the ATEM Mini is a vision mixer. You could have four inputs coming in. So I use it when I deliver training, so I can cut to a different camera and demonstrate something. I can run slides in through it. You know, you most people do not need that. Most people just need one of these little adapters and the kind of industry leader is the um, Elgato Camlink, yeah. uh, but you but you get ones for like twenty euros, which do pretty much the same thing. Um, and you even now some of the manufacturers of cameras have created applications. So if you plug your mirrorless or DSLR camera into your computer with a USB and you download the right software, it will turn it into a, a webcam. So just Google that, depending on which kind of um, camera you have, and then you wouldn't even need any of these devices because it would all be done through software. So just look at the model camera that you own and just Google using it as a webcam. And if it's possible to do it with software, that will pop up. If not, just spend a little bit of money and you could be talking sometimes between 20 and 80 euros to get an adapter to make that show up as a webcam when you plug it into your computer. So lessons learned, it doesn't take that much money to um, well move from being an amateur video caster to uh, almost a professional one. Yeah, we can do that for yeah. and, and you budget. must make silly mis you must make you must make silly mistakes. Like um I've got my laptop just propped up briefly because I was doing something and when I put it back every time I move my hand I'm bumping it right now. But again, because my microphone's decent, hopefully that's not make making a horrific noise. But um yeah, I think um when it comes to the quality of what you're doing, um it's up to you to decide what am I willing to spend? And if I was on a real budget, I would just get a USB microphone. Um Make sure you put your earphones in of some kind. You know, don't um, you don't want the sound coming out of your speakers. Um, I would get a light, a ring light, and then either a webcam or if you have a mirrorless or DSLR, upgrade to use that, and then you'll get that ni nice kind of Hollywood look, yeah. uh, which, again, you pop up on a Zoom call and your camera's at the right height, you've got nice lighting, maybe you've got that sort of blurry background effect that you've got from your camera. People notice. People are like, wow, you know, you look really professional. That's how I noticed you, actually. So you see that it does work. <laughs> it works, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I've been no, no joking aside. It's um, I've got so much work from the fact that when I've shown up on meetings and calls and pitches and all sorts of things, uh, my video and my sound looks is good. Um, I've even hosted virtual summits and conferences. Um, so I, I think that's like any any industry you work in. It's standing out. You know the old joke of. Um, where you know two people are being chased by the bear and one says to the other well we'll never outrun the bear and he says well i don't need to outrun the a bear i just need to outrun you you know you just need to be just ahead of the others in the same way if you're doing a podcast or presenting uh, your business or your cause or you're a journalist whatever if you just look that little bit more professional than everybody else you get noticed absolutely well, what i what i can stand however is you know, those guests who are coming uh, when they are invited with those giant headphones on their heads that like screws up all your editing efforts. <laughs> so that's what, what we have right now here. 
it looks very professional. It's like 20 bucks on, uh, on, on Jeff Bezos' site. I won't cite it here. No, <laughs> no advertising on this podcast. But thank you for the tip because it comes from you, actually. Yeah, well, that's the thing, because um, I don't like those things where you look like your air traffic control, you know, guiding planes into Skipol or something. Um, now, it, it gives you good audio and good video, but it, it doesn't look great. Now, it's not the end of the world, but if you want to look a bit better, um, what I use are earphones that are actually, I think, designed for jogging. Absolutely. But, you know, you know, musicians have those in-ears when they play, um, so it's kind of see-through transparent, and that goes in, in, in your ears. They come over the back of your ear and then into your ear. So on camera, you're not really noticing them. Whereas what most people do is they just wear their earphones and they're hanging down like they're listening to music. So again, it's not that important, but it's a nice little touch. So you look a little bit more like your TV presenter as opposed to somebody listening to their iPod.